Blog Talk Radio. while he's up there and he's the same individual that's down on earth as well 
and he's, and he's everywhere because he's the Holy Spirit too. So he's pretty much all, he's pretty much one individual. He sits in one seat, there's only one seat, and then he has different, three different modes. That's not Trinitarian, folks. That's not Trinity. That is modalism. That is a doctrine, is an old doctrine that has been rejected by the Christian church many years ago. So this is not Trinitarian. So, um, what I'm explaining here is what Trinity is and what the biblical view is. They are separate individuals. And at the same time, they work together as one. And when we were made as the image of God, there were two, man and female. Also, the husband and wife are one, but they are separate individuals. So that is exactly what Trinity is, is to be in unity in three different, in three different individuals. All right, Brother Sean Davis, um, what's your take on that? Anything you want to add to that? Um, what, what's the world view of the Trinity? I'm pretty much in agreement with uh, Brother Stan there uh, for the most part because uh, a lot of people do when we hear the word Trinity, they're thinking uh, Siamese, you know, just a, a, a one person with three heads, a three-headed monster or something. But <laughs> I mean, it's just like what he said. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're all one. But the Bible says in because the Bible says in Deuteronomy six verse four it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God the Lord our God is one Lord. No word one in the Hebrew is Akkad, which means united. If you look in Genesis chapter one, verse twenty six and twenty seven, the Bible made it clear, God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. He didn't say, I will. He said, No, let us. And the word God, if you don't look in the original Hebrew, is plural. That means more than one. And so when it says here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, it's using, it's using it in the plural, plural term, which means that they are all united. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are all united with one purpose. And Jesus himself prayed in John chapter 17. He says, I pray that they will all be one. Talking about his disciples, I pray that they will all be one, even as you and I, Father, are one. See, they're all God wanted His disciples to be on one accord, just like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are on one accord. They're not you know, a Siamese, but they're one in purpose, one in planning, one in power, one in focus, and that's the same thing. Amen. Now, uh, Brother Josh, I'm going to come back to you uh, with the ultimate question. Um, but before I okay. ask that question, anyone that wants to uh, call in, just call in at eight seven seven. Two eight zero ninety six eighty one. That's eight seven seven two eight zero ninety six eighty one. Also on this segment, I have the chat room open on uh, this log on the blogtalkradio dot com slash debate talk for you, and you can type in your question, and I'll uh, ask the panel the question. All right, so brother Josh, um, do you believe in the Trinity? And explain. Do you believe? Well, um, to be bl uh, blunt, no, and I don't believe in the Trinity because the Trinity is not biblical. And the, the strange thing about this, and, you know, I have sources that I brought to back this up, as well as scripture, is that um, theologians admit that the Trinity is not biblical. In fact, the word Trinity was first coined by um, one of the so-called church fathers, um, Tertullian. You've probably heard of him. Mm -hmm. And he first used it near the close of the second century. And it did not become a common in use until the 4th or 5th century. So the disciples, from a biblical standpoint of view, never knew of a trinity. And I know some people will argue and even admit that the word trinity does not um, appear in the Bible. They will admit that, but they'll say the concept is there. But the concept of the trinity is not there either. I think what many people are doing is they are taking three and trying to make it one. Like, it can be proven, it can be read directly from the Scripture that the Father is God. It can be proven, it can be read directly from the Scripture that Jesus is God. But nowhere in the Bible, in the New Testament, where you ever read that the Holy Spirit is God or that the Holy mm. Spirit is worshipped. You can read mm. that to sin against um, the Holy Spirit is the same as sinning against God. You can read that to lie to the Holy Spirit is the same as lying to God. You can read that um, God sent his spirit and it inspired the prophet to speak. So when the Holy Ghost speaks, it's just as if God himself is speaking, but it cannot be read in the Bible that the Holy Ghost 
is God. It can only be read that the Father is God and that the Son is God, and all theologians, honest ones, they admit that the concept of the Trinity is a late addition to Christian doctrine. And I have sources to back all of this up. Mm. Um, Sean Davis, you want to comment? Well, for the most part, um, I do admit that the word Trinity is not in the Bible. You will not. I'm very, as a matter of fact, I'm very careful when I when I talk about the concept of God, especially when using the word Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I'm careful of as when I uh, try to or uh, try careful not to refute the word Trinity because let me explain. I'm kind of in the middle between. I'm kind of in the middle for the most part. When I use when I talk about God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I talk I mention it as the Godhead. I don't talk about I don't say Trinity in general, but there are some individuals who are they speak against the Trinity, but at the same time they don't believe that Jesus is is, is God. You see, and then they say then they don't believe they believe that the Comforter is Jesus Christ and not the Holy Spirit also. Even though Jesus Christ he he is our comfort, no doubt about it, but he comforts us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also known as the comforter in John uh, 16. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, very careful uh, with this particular topic. And as a matter of fact, I can't, to be honest with you, I can't fully explain who, who God, who, who God is, uh, really is. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's something that I can't fully grasp, but the Bible gives me enough evidence to where I can. I know enough. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can't fully explain it. I can't fully grasp it. But the Bible gives me plain direction on uh, Jesus being uh, equal to God. Uh, uh, he is God. He is equal with the Father. Uh, when God said, let us make man in our image and after our life, I can't fully explain that. You know, I can't fully explain mm -hmm. how how it works. But I just know it, that that's what the Bible says, and I believe it. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Brother Stanley? Yeah, um, well, my response to Josh, first of all, thank, I, I'm glad Josh had stated his view, because I'm always curious on how people view the Trinity Doctrine when they disagree with it. And um, he, and I, I was kind of curious, because um, Brother Josh, first of all, thank you for your videos that you have, your Bible studies you placed on YouTube, because it's a blessing for a lot of people. Praise and um, I just, like, on one of them, he, in one of the videos that I watched, um, he, he believes that Jesus is God. So that's not an argument with Josh. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I was always curious, is he a modalist? Uh, but now I'm realizing uh, when he explained it, when he explained his view that he, he's not a modalist. He believes. Jesus is God. He believes it's proven in Scripture. He believes the Father is God, and he believes that's proven in Scripture. But his, his, the issue is the Holy Spirit, is whether the Holy Spirit is, a, is God or worshipped. Or, so that was the, that's the issue. It's not necessarily whether... There's, there's, there's a definitely a Godhead. I believe he believes in the exactly. Godhead. Yeah. And um, there's, there's, there's the Father, the Father and the and there's the Father and the Son alone. But the Spirit is um, something else. Not only his force, his activity, his, you know, but not necessarily an individual that has a thought, that has a mind, that's that's worship, that accepts worship, things like that. So that's the idea. He just and, and he said he said one said he said one thing. He said there's nowhere in the Scripture where the Holy Spirit is mentioned as God. Now, there is a scripture that, um, uh, that comes to mind, and uh, I don't know, let's look at the scriptures together there. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. Uh, that implies to me that the Holy Spirit is God. Mm. Uh, you're and, talking and about you, when they say it's the last, the Holy well, Spirit. Yeah, let's, let's read it, because let's, let's, um, I'm sure you know what it is. Um, but I'm already there. We have, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have all listeners listening in that um, probably don't even know much of the scriptures, too, some of them, or some of them that, that, has, that has a hang-up also with the Trinity, and they don't know how to explain these things. So I want everybody to, to listen into this so they could all watch it. And I'm sure Brother Josh is, and Brother Sean are extremely knowledgeable in God's Word, so that's something that I, I'm not going to even be refuting that idea. I know they do. All right, it says here, starting from verse 1, it says, But a certain man, but by the way, guys, I'm reading from the King James Version. Mm -hmm. It says here, but a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part 
of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost mm. and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine, thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Uh. But we just read in verse 3 that they lied to the Holy Ghost. Right. They didn't mm -hmm. say you lied to the Father. They didn't mm. say he lied to the That's Son. Deep. They said he lied mm -hmm. to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And then later on, a verse la two verses later, he repeated himself in another manner. He, instead of him saying the Holy Ghost, he said, man, you lied to God. So mm -hmm. when, I, when, I read, when I read this text here, what's going into my mind, now whether one can agree or disagree, that's fine. But what I'm getting from this is that it's an evidence. It's an evidence. This is not, a, this is not an arbitrary doctrine that's sitting around there that will have no scriptural backings for it. This is a scriptural well, 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 can, 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 can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Yes. yes, yes I I can I ask a question? question. This, this is a question, right? I understand what you're saying, but I would not agree that this is conclusive evidence. No, no, no. Oh, and, is evidence. And, and evidence. But, but, but what I'm saying is, the same can be argued if a king sent a messenger. And if you lie to the messenger, it is the same as lying to the king. That does not mean that the king is, that the messenger is the king. And if you keep reading in verse 9, Peter repeats himself again, and he said, Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord, showing that the Holy yes. Spirit is something separate that belongs to God, the Spirit of God? He clarifies this. The Holy Spirit is not implied to be God right here. Peter clarified it. It's the Spirit of God the Lord, or the Spirit of God, showing ownership, showing possession, not being God, not being equal with God, but belonging to God, because if you lie to the Spirit of God, it's as mm -hmm. if you lie to God himself, just like if you lie to the king's messenger, it's as if you're lying to the king himself, so that's why I said this is not conclusive, this is not conclusive evidence I would never come in and say that one scripture would make it conclusive evidence for an entire doctrine. That's something that I would never buy. I would never con con um, condone the idea one can take one scripture and then make it a doctrine. Now, you can take one scripture that is very, con that, that is very direct, and you, mm -hmm. can you, can, you can make it ambiguous. You can make that mm -hmm. scripture ambiguous if there's no other supporting evidence to support that scripture, because that scripture alone won't do it. You have to have other texts that give you the implication. But let me ask right. you something, Josh. Let me, let me mm -hmm. ask you something. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit is personal? Mm -hmm. No, I do not. And I intend to prove that the Holy Spirit is not a persona, is not an individual. It is okay. the power of of God. It is the way in which God communicates with us mm. and operates in this world. It is not an individual. And if you would allow me, I can start by showing you Acts chapter, let's go to, uh, I'm sorry, let's go to Luke chapter 24. Okay. Luke, tw Luke 24. Luke 24 and verse 45. And I realize we're pressed for time, so I'm going to be kind of moving a little fast here, but I'm going to try okay. to be as comprehensible as possible. Amen. Luke 24 and 45 states, Then opened he their understanding, talking about Jesus, talking to his disciples, that they might mm -hmm. understand the scriptures. And he said mm -hmm. unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooves Christ to suffer and to, be, and to rise from the dead the third day. Now listen to this, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So he told okay. them to wait 
and so they'd be endued with power from on high. Now we turn yes. to Acts chapter 1. Mm-hmm. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. And all throughout the New Testament, the, the, the um, Holy Spirit is always, always described as the power of God. It is the way in which God operates in this world and communicates with us, and it's also how he is omnipresent, because God himself is on the throne, but his spirit is everywhere. That's what makes him omnipresent. Uh, Acts chapter 1, he's present through his spirit. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6, it says right here, When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not known, it is not for you to know the times of the season which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. The Holy mm-hmm. Ghost is not a persona. It is the power of God. It is That's not right, a man. person. It is not God himself. It's not I just want to show all of us showing what they like that. Yeah, I got I got to ask some. I'm just I'm, I'm I'm listening, but I'm I'm, I'm listening to everything you all are saying. Um, just going back to where we was reading in Acts. Uh, I think it was Acts chapter five about Ananias and Sapphira, and mm-hmm. Brother Stan talked about he showed from the Bible how when it said they lied unto the Holy Spirit, and then it said, and then Peter goes back down and later on the verse he says, "Thou hast not lied unto men, but you have lied unto God." And then dropping mm-hmm. back down, he says uh, to talking to his wife, "You, why have you tempted the spirit of the Lord?" Now I can just I can just go ahead and say that I was I'm, I'm in agreement with Brother Stan as showed from the Bible. Uh, it's very it's, to me it's very clear, and it, even though the Bible does say and it's true uh, that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Lord. But if you look at John chapter 4, verse 24, it says God is a spirit. And they that worship mm-hmm. him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God mm-hmm. is a spirit. He's a spirit. And um, so are angels, right? Angels are many. Exactly. Angels, angels are spirits too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so did they make them God? No, 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 no. Oh, no. Okay, uh, the reason why I ask that is because the, the logic that you use to make the Holy Spirit God was the fact that God is a spirit. That's what you just said. So if no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Um, I, I, what I'm getting from what Sean is saying is that the Holy Spirit is, con- is called the Spirit of God, right? Yes, exactly. And if God himself is a spirit, then is, is he a spirit of the spirit? But that doesn't make any logical sense. No, wait, no, no, no. no. Uh, listen, listen, that's not what I said. You're misunderstanding me now. No, 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 no. What, what I said, Sean. Yeah, no, no, what, what I'm saying is, what, what I'm saying is, Sean said that the Spirit of the Lord then he said yes. it tells you in John 4 that God is a spirit. Yeah. he said. Yeah, so, God is a spirit. And then so what he was, what he was saying spirit. was, if God is a spirit and the Holy Spirit is a spirit, what I got from what he said, correct me if I'm wrong, is that that's what makes the Holy Spirit God, which is why no. I asked the question, are angels spirits? Because the exactly. angels are spirit and God is a that's spirit. My and my point is he must be just hear me out now. The angel of the Lord can also be called the spirit of the Lord. Would you agree with that? The angel of the Lord can be called the spirit. Yes, I agree with that. Yes. Right, because the angel is a spirit. But yet, God yes. is a yes. spirit. So wouldn't that be the spirit of the spirit? Um, we, we, yeah, we that be the spirit careful. of the spirit. We've got to be careful with that because let me explain to you. Do you agree that Moses spoke to God in Mount Sinai? Yes, I do. But the scripture says that he spoke to an angel of the Lord. Yes, mm. because so, the angel okay, came in God's authority. So you don't believe so that was God? Say so what? You don't believe he was in the presence of God? There were times when Moses was in the presence of God, and there were times when he was in the presence of an angel. And he no, tells I, you... No, I'm talking about at that instance, when he was at Mount Sinai, was he in the presence of God? That's the question. According to Acts chapter 7, there was an angel. <clears throat> According to Acts chapter 7, it said the angel that spoke to him in Mount Sinai. According to Acts chapter 7, that was an angel. That's what Scripture okay. said in Acts chapter 7. That was an angel. And there was an angel in the burning bush. And it was also an angel that went before them in the cloud. Sometimes in Exodus it says it was the Lord. Sometimes it says it was an angel, which goes back to authority. When something comes in God's authority, it is if you're dealing with God himself. But that doesn't make it God. This is the same thing that's happening in Acts chapter 5. 
Like mm-hmm. when you read, go back to read Exodus where it tells you that the angel of the Lord went before them in the pillar of a cloud. Then in the very next chapter, it says the Lord himself went before them in the pillar of a cloud. Go back to Exodus chapter 3. It said an angel spoke to them out of the burning bush. But if you keep reading mm-hmm. the three verses later, it says God spoke to them out of yeah, the burning exactly. bush. Exactly. I agree what's with that. I agree with everything. What's, what's going on is when God sends even human messengers in his mm-hmm. authority or in his name to mm-hmm. lie to that human messenger or to lie to that spirit as if they're lying to God himself. That's why I said in Acts chapter 5, just because it said that to lie to the Holy Ghost means that you lie to God, that does not mean that the Holy Ghost is God. A uh, more biblical and uh, consistent interpretation with other scripture would suggest mm-hmm. that to lie to anything sent by God or in God's authority, because there mm-hmm. are three that are reckon in heaven, you know, all three of them are one, if you lie to Jesus, you have lied to God. If you lie Amen. to Moses, Amen. if you lie to Moses and he's coming in the name of God, you lie to God. So if mm-hmm. I lie to Moses, what did Moses tell the children of Israel when they rebelled against him? He said, you're not murmuring against me. You're murmuring Amen. against God. That's what he Amen. said, right? But that don't mean Amen. that Moses Amen. is God. And anybody Amen. who would read that scripture and say, well, see, first he said he lied to Moses. Then he said he lied to God. So that means Moses is God. No, you would not approach scripture like that. You would say, no, lying to Moses is the same as lying to God because Moses comes in on behalf of God. That is what the Holy Spirit does. That's what Jesus said. Can I interject for a second? Can I interject for a second? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I, you, did a, I'm, you did a great job in explaining yourself. I, I, and I agree with practically everything you said. I just don't believe, I don't agree with your conclusion, but I agree with practically everything that you're saying. But there's a problem with, with, there's a problem with the conclusion of your views on everything you just stated there. In all the examples you've given about Moses, a messenger, an angel, that represents, that's coming in the name of God or of God, and if you lie to that individual, when they're coming in the name of God, they are lying to God. And I completely agree with you with that. But <laughs> this is the problem I have with that, though, is that, with the conclusion, I mean, is that the Holy the, the Scripture says in Acts 5 that they lie to the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, mm, listen to this carefully. I want you to listen to this carefully. All the other examples you gave were all personal individuals. Every mm-hmm. single example you gave were all personal individuals. But you say the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit isn't personal. Now, I'm trying to understand something here. Mm. Now, if, the, if President Obama sent Hillary Clinton as an ambassador... And she's speaking for President Obama. If somebody disrespects Hillary, you disrespect the president. Now, mm-hmm. now check this out. If Obama sent a note, a paper, and sent it over towards you and gave you a message, now that's a, a personal thing now. The person has his personal message in it, but the thing itself is not personal. How could somebody lie to the to the object? You can't lie well, to an object. Can I, you can't can I, lie can to a force. I'm, 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 I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm okay. finishing up the question. I'm still finishing up the question. You cannot lie to a force. You cannot lie to gravity. You cannot lie to a to a thing. You can only lie to people. You can only lie to someone personal. So, so, so when, when when Peter was saying, "You have lied to the Holy Spirit. You have lied to God." You lied to someone. You didn't lie to something. Okay, okay. So that's that's my that's my position. What, 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 how do you address that kind of position? Well, let me show you how I address that kind of position. First of all, that position, what you just stated, while it's logical, holds a lot of assumptions because it's okay. based on the assumption that you can't do this or you can't do that. When when you're dealing with God, anything is possible. So you can't say yeah. something sent from God cannot be, have this done, or that can't be done if it's dealing with God. If God wants to put a force in here and personalize it in poetry or whatever and say that in metaphorically speaking or symbolically speaking or allegorically speaking, to lie to my power is to lie to me, then yes, that can be done. But this is what we, how do we know, how do we prove if something is a person or if it's a force or an ideal. How do you go to Scripture and you bear that out? Well, what do you do is you go to places in the Bible 
where it specifically mentions the father and the son in a person, not allegorically, not metaphorically, and if the Holy Spirit was an individual co-regent with the other two, then when you agree that we should see it, when you agree? I disagree. Okay, you disagree. Okay, so what you're saying is, if I go to the Bible and I read in the Bible the power, the authority that the Father and the Son have sitting on the throne, then if you're telling me that if there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, then if they're all equal, and they're one, and they're all three persons, then whenever we're dealing with them in the person as far as authority, who's going to be ruling in the end, who's sitting on the throne, we should see evidence of the three together, at least one, at least one. And hold that thought, yeah. fellas. Hold that thought, fellas. Uh, we have a few callers out here, but I'm gonna let you finish up, and then I'm gonna add the callers and Josh finish up. You can you continue, Josh. Good. Okay, okay. I thought you all were gonna take a call. Okay. Uh, for instance, let's go to um, Acts chapter seven. Let's go to Acts chapter seven again. This is when Stephen was getting stoned. Because if somebody tells me that I'm reading about something in the Bible that's a person or a persona, a literal individual. Then, and they're telling me he's with God and he's with the Son, then I should be able to see this individual at least one time. If it's a person or persona, I should be able to see it. This is Acts chapter 7 and verse 54. Look what Stephen says right here as he's getting stoned. Look what he says, what he saw. He says, um, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with his teeth. So he looked full, but he being full of the Holy Ghost. Notice that he was full of the Holy Ghost, right? Look up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now, where is the Holy Ghost? If the Holy Ghost is an individual, if Jesus is sitting on the right hand, why the Holy Ghost ain't sitting on the left hand? Y'all come every time. Mm -hmm. Because he was but wait, a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, how come every time in the Bible when we read about actual apparitions and visions or what people can actually see in visions and experience, there is never a mention of the Holy Ghost. I just got two more, just two more, and then, you know. Uh, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta address that point first. Um, okay, but I, I wait, I'm wanna, still I expressing just... the point. I'm still expressing the point, like you said. I'm still expressing the point. <laughs> uh, you know, just in case. Revelation 21. I got something I want to say, bro. Revelation 21. You got the floor. You got the floor. We don't want you to take over the entire time, too. Also, All right, I'm, I'm not trying to do that, but keep in mind, I got two against one. I got two people who believe the same thing. Oh, one we're, we're, giving you, we're giving you freedom, though. We're giving you a lot okay, of freedom. Okay, okay. You know, let us, let us so respond. This, let us respond. Okay, this is Revelation 21 and verse 22. This is the end. This is New Jerusalem. Can't go any further than this. Verse 22. And I found no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, which is the Messiah, Jesus Christ, are the temple mm -hmm. of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of the Lord did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Once again, in the end, when it, goes, when it gets down to actual people, individuals, the Holy Ghost is nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. It stands to reason that if it was a Godhead consisting of three individuals, it would say, I saw God, I saw the Lamb, and I saw the Holy Spirit, or I saw the Comfort. But every time you deal with actual operating apparitions and individuals, you never see the Holy Ghost. So that kind of makes you wonder, is the Holy Ghost an individual? If he is, how come we don't ever see him sitting on the throne or next to the throne or... In heaven, all these visions that the apostles right. and the prophets had in heaven, never the Holy Spirit. Okay, can I can quickly respond to that. I know you're going to get to the callers. I just yeah, want to quickly respond to that. Quickly. I'll be yeah, quick. Um, um, I just, I don't hope um, <laughs> you realize yeah. how how Josh began his statement. Josh began his statement with stating that I was making a particular assumptions of things that can't be done and can't be done. So God can have a spirit here in a in a personal form. So that if, you, if I were to lie to it, right, then it would be like as if it was personal. So, so the question is, then if God can do that, then, then why are we limiting God for the things that we're seeing or we're not seeing? Hmm. Why are we limiting him? Um, this, um, this is the idea. If God can do that, then we can't say the Holy Spirit is a person or not a person. 
Mm-hmm. We can't say that. So, so um, all we can say is, is there evidence in Scripture that says, okay, you see some, you gave some Scriptures, you're going to see a picture of the Holy Ghost present there. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is not there. A persona of the Holy Spirit there, so the Holy Spirit is not there. That's the conclusion from it. So, but, the, uh, but what about other Scriptures where they give the idea that it's personal? Then, then we're not going to we're not going to ignore that part. No, we have to make use of those parts too. So we have a, a situation where you see a picture here, you see the Father and the Son, with the Holy Spirit. But over here, you see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So yeah. you see that that side, the Father, Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. You see, you see the baptized in the name. Oh, huh? well, yeah, because the Holy Spirit is going to be the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say, I'm going to say. Okay, Brother Josh. Oh, I, I, just, I want to make sure I understood you correctly. You said you can show in Scripture yes. a persona of the Holy Ghost with the yes. Father and the Son. Yes. The persona meaning personal attributes. In other words, I mean, that's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. Let me clarify myself. When I say, can you show me in the Scripture where there are visions of somebody in heaven, somebody having a vision like John, Ezekiel, anybody, and they say, I saw God sitting on the throne, I saw mm-hmm. the Son standing in his right hand, and I saw mm-hmm. the Holy Ghost. You can oh, show me. No, 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 I can't show that. You know, but I'll tell you this much. Can you show me in Scripture where the Father has human flesh? We're not talking about human flesh because God... No, 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 no. I want, you to flesh flesh I, mean, I want you to understand the point. Do you, why can't you show that? Because why God can't the person show that? Because exactly God is my point. There's certain things that's well, well, not well, in the Let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. After I explain myself, after I explain myself, you're going to say it's not a contradiction. When you, when, when, this, this, what you're doing is this, Josh. You're saying, where, if I don't see a personal, a physical individual there, then he's not there. That's what that's, that's, that's not what I'm saying. saying. That's not that's what, what I'm saying. saying. No, what I'm saying is the Holy Spirit exists. I'm not saying the Holy Spirit isn't there. The Holy Spirit is all over. It's omnipresent. No, I'm saying the personal. What I'm the saying personal, is personal, the, personal if Holy the Holy Spirit, Spirit was an individual, if it was an yeah, individual, if, you know what I'm if the Holy Spirit you was an it's individual, not there. then why is it that the Holy Spirit is not showing up in heaven with authority exactly. and power <laughs> at okay. the end? Can I, can I so you're all saying that. that. You're yeah. saying that. So that's go ahead, right. go ahead, Salvador. Go ahead. Yeah. And I just really yeah, good, brother Sean. Good, brother Sean. Good. Now I know it's what uh, brother John said uh, about the Holy Spirit is showing authority. Why it's not in Scripture? Him showing authority. Well, if you look at Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verse nineteen. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I, I just heard. I just heard. Well, I that. said. I said at the end with the Father and the Son in a persona having authority reigning at the end. I said, in a persona. Keep in mind, I said, in okay, a persona. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I said, as a persona, as something in the vision where you see a individual. That's what I said, an individual. You cannot show any scripture in the Bible where the Holy Spirit, at the end, when these visions, when the, if I say, if the say, I saw God sitting on the throne and Jesus standing on his right hand side, this is an actual vision of people who are in heaven, individualized, personified. Okay. You can see them. Why did he has, not see? Has any, oh, wait, has anybody ever seen the Father at any time? Any time? You know, has anybody ever seen the Father at any time? No, not not like actually saw him. They seen him in vision. Nobody, yeah, nobody seen him. him. So then, my point saw him in a vision. In, in visions, they didn't see him directly. Not directly. Not so, not so, directly. So, 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 then, my point, my point in all this is, there are many things that, although. You know, um, you see, like I said, uh, the question I was asking you, can you show me in the scriptures that God has a human flesh? And then you said, of course, I'm not talking about that, but you didn't even say my point when you asked that. I said, said, no. My point, my point, my point, my point in this is, my point in that is, there are many things in scriptures that you're not going to see directly in there um, for you to know. Like, in other words, but, um, Jesus, Jesus says that um, the Holy Spirit is another comforter. Now, I, I, you know, when I say another, that's something separate of myself. Am I correct? Yep. So now, how could a thing hmm. give comfort? How could, could a thing, how? how could a thing grieve? How could something grieve? How could something... 
How could something um, teach? You know what I'm saying? Like, see, do you see what he, what's happening here? He said, look, I'm going to go and send you someone else. This is what I'm getting from here. And, and, but, but you see, and then in all these instances, he was considered to be he. He. Him. Exactly. Personal, he. personal exactly. thing. And dealing with, and, then, and, then, and in the same concept, the idea is, he said, another, he, mm-hmm. him, another, him, he. Mm-hmm. And then, when in baptism, like, 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 like Sean was about to read in Matthew 28, he said to baptize mm-hmm. in the name of. Mm-hmm. Now, now this, this, is, this is very important. This is very important. In the name of the Father, and mm-hmm. in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. But remember, the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit is just a, is just a thing. That you know, the, the, other, the, other, the other two are individuals. They are, they are obviously individuals, but, but also baptize them in the name of this thing. That but the is, Bible calls it a thing, though. But, but, but sadly, the Bible calls it a thing. The Bible calls Paul it a thing. In the, the Bible, Bible calls Romans, In the book of Romans, Paul said the Spirit itself. Doesn't Paul say that? The Spirit itself. Let me, me call question. it. Spirit can be called that, it. Listen, you said can be called spirit. Personal spirit can be called it. When Jesus, no, when Jesus no, 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 wait, 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 Jesus, wait, a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Can you show me one time in the Bible where the Father or the Son is ever referred to as an it? I can show you where I can show you where a spirit, an uh, individual. No, 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 no. The, the argument is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all equal, and they are all God. That is the Trinity doctrine. So wait, wait, wait. that is the okay, case. Okay, I got it. That means whatever it. is true for one, wait a minute, but true for the other two. I got it. Right? But brother Josh, but brother Josh, do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? I know. That, I know. I understood your question. I understood your question. But let me, but you have to understand that your question is is signifying that because it's named it, because it's named it, is not personal. Because it's named that, it's not personal. No, I did not. No, listen. I did not say that. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is personal because it comes from God and it's the way he communicates with us. That's what makes it personal. What I'm saying is whenever you're dealing with an individual in the Bible, in no case is it ever referred to as an it or an inanimate object. What I I'm disagree. saying is, if yeah, hold on, okay, then, hold okay, on, then show, me, show me an hold example on, of God the Father. No, no, no. no. I'm going to prove your point wrong. I'm not going to let you direct. Hold on. Hold on, fellas. I got to get to these callers. I got to get to these okay. callers. <laughs> All right, hold on. Um, uh, 570, you got a question? 570, you got a question? Yeah, hello? 570? Can you hear me? All right, we're going to go to the next caller. Uh, 678, you're live on the Bay Talk feed. Do you have a question? 678? Hello, yes? I guess not. <laughs> All right, uh, one more. 817, do you have a question? You're live on Debate Talk for you. Do you have a question or comment? 817? I guess none of these callers are they're just listening, I guess. All right. <laughs> All right, Brother Josh, continue, Brother. No, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was talking. I was talking. He asked the question. Yeah, Brother Stan. He, yeah, asked, Brother Stan. he asked me to prove. Um, but but the thing about it, he's directing his proof into a specific no, no, situation. No, no. My question, no, no, wait a minute. My question was, let me restate my question so there will be no confusion. And if you can't answer it, just say you can't answer it. Well, I, say, I, will, I will answer it the way I want to. Okay. Okay. I mean, you can answer it whatever way you choose. To answer and I'm going to answer it the right way. The right okay, way. Okay. So the, okay. So here's the question. Whenever we are dealing with individuals, personal yes. individuals, we always, in the Bible and in English, today's language, we always say he, she, them, or they. We always say that. Never, if I'm referring to Stanley, will I say it. Stanley is not an it. He's an individual. Stanley is a he. He's a him. So what I'm saying is, when it comes to the Father, every single time you deal with the Father, it says he or him. When you deal with the Son, Every single time you deal with the Son, he or him. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, John chapter 14, him, he. Romans chapter 8, it, and other places, it, it, which suggests the same thing that's going
going on with the Bible that's been going on since the beginning of time. This is oh, so we're going to let's go no, no, to the no, scripture. I'm not going Please, to tell you what it need to be. I'm just telling you. Your, what I'm your question is too long, man. Come on, let's get okay, to okay. it, man. Let's, let's, let's see. Okay, the question has been short. Go ahead and answer it. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to look, we're going to start from verse 22, and I'm going to be really quick with it, because we're running out of time. All right, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went into a mountain apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was, was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. Now, oh my God. I'm going to stop right there for a little bit, and I'm going to meditate on this one. Now, a spirit they were focused on was a personal individual they thought was walking towards them. A personal... It, I, I need to finish this, brother. I you preached a sermon just now. Let me, let me, let me respond. <laughs> a, this, this, is a, this, this is a personal spirit in their mind, in their mentality. They thought that was a personal spirit. And they said with their words, it's not he. <laughs> it is oh my spirit. So now I want you to understand this carefully. This is common in English tongue or the human tongue. Spirits, even um, personal spirits, can be referred to as it. Even babies. It, it is, is a is girl. A spirit. It is a girl. It is a boy. It is a, it is a boy. A so even in, even in these terms, personal individuals can be classified as it. So, so to say, oh, you, this, this, is, this is not right because you cannot, uh, because a person cannot be called an it. Person, yes, they can be called an it. Yes, a spirit. In the, we have this right, I just proved it right in the scriptures that even a spirit is called an it. So then the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit can be classified as an it as well and still be a personal being. The only thing you've proven is your ignorance of the Greek grammar and the English language. That's the only thing you've just proven here, brother. No, I did it, brother. You can, you can begin, you can begin a sentence with the preposition it, but you don't, Call a noun, a personal noun, in it. I can say, it is my friend, or it is a man, or it is a woman that spoke to me. You can start yeah. that with the preposition it, but you won't say the woman is it unless you're playing a game of tag and you say she's it. You follow what I'm saying? What I'm trying to get you to understand is, number two, that was not a personal spirit. If you go to the Greek of this um, particular verse in Matthew chapter 14, Verse 27, mm -hmm. and look at the word, mm -hmm. translated spirit there. Numa. I mean, Numa. Let me with you. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, and that's not, it's not Numa. You're thinking about Numa. No, that's wrong. It is Phantasma, which is where we get our okay. word phantom from. And where we get our word phantom, they would say it's a ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's 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 it was a phantom. A but it's not personal. Saying, it's still it's personal. No, no, no. That's not personal because if it's a ghost, Holy Ghost, that's not personal. That's not an individual. They thought they saw a ghost, so they say it's a ghost. You don't say he's a ghost unless you know specifically but, who that is. Oh, so, so you thought they didn't see it? They saw it. Stanley, Stanley, I got it. 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 I got John's word, okay, he believes that Jesus Christ is God, is equal with God. He believes God he believes is the Father. But what is, he believes the Holy Spirit is this, but he does not believe that it falls in the category, he does not fall in the category of God. 
being a part of the exactly. Godhead. But if you read Matthew 28, verses 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the, of the Holy Ghost. That word mm -hmm. name also means authority. So you're correcting and you're baptizing in the authority in the name of the Father, mm -hmm. Son, and the Holy Ghost. If the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit was just an it, how can it have an authority? And that's because Jesus said in Matthew 14, the Father will say in my authority. The Father will say in my authority. You got to remember what you read, bro. You can't forget what he said about the come. I'm sorry, John 14, whom the Father will say in my name, my authority. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. comes in the authority of Jesus. It doesn't have its own authority. He said, whom the Father will send in my authority. It doesn't have its own authority. That's and what he said in John 14, unless you disagree. That's what he said in John 14, whom the Father will send in my authority. Didn't you say that? Hold on, brothers. Hold on. We have another okay. call. <laughs> we have another call, my brother. Hold on, man. There's only a few minutes left. Um, three, four, seven, uh, you're live on the Bay Talk field. You want to have a question or a comment? Uh, yeah. What's your question, brother? Is it three, four, seven? Can you hear me? Seven, four, two, three, four, seven. Can you hear me? I seem like the calls are not coming in. <laughs> yeah, brothers. Uh, man, the hey, um, hey, think, um, what's his name? Uh, Sal, didn't you say one yeah. time that you were having problems, like, with calls coming through one time before? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And maybe what's going on. I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, okay. All right, Brother Sean or, you know, Brother Brother, brother Josh, you want to continue your uh, your comments? Okay. Well, the last thing I just said was um, mm -hmm. when we were baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost. And I agree yes, that right. the word name means authority. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Right. But in John 14, Jesus plainly said in verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my authority. So the Comforter doesn't come in its own authority. The Comforter doesn't have its own authority. If it was God, then it would just say, whom the, whom the Comforter will come in authority. It said it will come in my authority, which signifies a, a, um, a level of power. Like Jesus sent, the Father sent Jesus, Jesus sent the Comforter. Because so Jesus said, I sent, you know, I was sent by my Father. The Comforter comes in the authority of Jesus. He's telling you right here that his authority supersedes the uh, Comforter or the Holy Ghost. That's why he said, whom the Father will send in my authority. If I come in your authority, that means you have authority over me. If I'm coming in your authority, if somebody says stop in the name of the law, that means that that law has authority over you. If a police officer said right now, you mm -hmm. stop in the name of the law. We are part of the authority of the law. If a police say, I am the law. You've heard policemen say this before. The, mm -hmm. I am the law, or the law is knocking on the door. That means somebody who represents the law or who carries out the authority of the law. Okay, the you, make a, you make a good point. You make a good point. But if you go back to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven mm -hmm. and in earth. And where power mm -hmm. also signifies authority. So exactly. does that mean that Jesus agree. Christ received authority from his Father? Does that mean that he's, he's not God, too? No, he's that's not, not mean that he's not. This, this, does that I'm mean he's saying. not equal with God? No, I'm not saying that. So the only thing I'm saying is, you just know, 14, the only thing you just you're basically coming to the conclusion that, G that the Holy Spirit, because he is Jesus Christ, is, it says, whom the Father will send in my name, and he shall do mm -hmm. all things, because it said that, it, it basically just, bottom line, it does not mean that he's God. No, I did, I did not say that. The only thing I brought that up for was to show you that when it says baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they did not imply equal authority, which means all three of them are equal and all three of them are God. Only reason why I brought that up is to show you that when you baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the authority comes from the Father, which he gave to Jesus, which Jesus gave to the Holy Ghost. That is a link. That is not equal. If I give you your authority, we are not equal. Whoever I give authority to, I have more power than them. I have more well, authority. I, agree. I give you I agree. authority. If I give I you authority, come on now. Yeah, yeah, Josh, I don't think you're right. I, I, I agree with you what you're saying about the, as far as the authority is concerned. I believe just the Father has more authority over the Son as well. 
But um, the, but the, the idea is, um, when I was focusing on the idea of the equal, it wasn't the idea of the authority. It's the idea of essence. It's the idea of, um, they doesn't take away from the idea that they're one. You know what I mean? Because even if the husband has more authority over the wife, they're still one. You know what I mean? So, 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 they, and, they, and they, like, the Bible also said that the woman being the weaker, the weaker vessel. You know what I mean? So sometimes even one can be stronger than the other. But you know, the idea I'm looking at, and even if, even if you look at the situation of a an, an army in a in a military, you know, the corporal could be much stronger than the sergeant, but the sergeant has more authority over the corporal. You know what I mean? So, um, so we're talking about. I'm focusing, I'm focusing on. The, the yeah, Trinity yes, doctrine, I'm talking that they're all equal in power, rank, and authority. That's what the Trinity doctrine states. They're all no, equal in power, rank, no, and authority. No, I disagree with that. I disagree oh, with that. We say that they are one. They are one, one in purpose, in power, in in they one in purpose, they one in power. That so power, power the that, who has the most power between the Father and the Son? Well, we, we need to define power because power can be can be looked at different ways. Power can okay, be looked okay, at physical. Okay, okay. Let me let me reword the question. Are the Son and the Father equal in authority? No. Is the Son and the Holy Spirit equal in authority? No. So that would mean that they are one in the sense, but that sense cannot be that they are all God because if they were all God, no. they would be equal in authority. Okay, no. now, now I got to interject. Now I got to interject. They would be equal now. in authority. Now I got to interject for real now. Because one thing we got to make clear even when we talk about this subject, we don't know everything. We don't know every single detail. Mm -hmm. You see, if you were to go to the Bible in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible makes it clear. It says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And then it says in verse 6, to be in the form of God, better not robbery, to be equal with God. God. To be mm -hmm. equal with God. To be similar. And also mean to, mm -hmm. to, to agree. To, yeah. to be like. The only one who is like God, if you were to, we would do a whole study on it, but we don't have time right now. We're talking about Mike L., the archangel. And then where Mike L. means who is like God. And archangel basically means the chief of the angels. The only one who's chief mm -hmm. and commander is Jesus Christ. And he is equal with Amen. the Amen. Father. He receives so the worship of our angels, of angels just like God the Father yes. receives worship of the angels. Uh, did I hear it? Yes, you said Michael the archangel is Jesus. We believe that. Um, but uh, we're going to make that another topic. We're going to make that another topic. We're going to make that another debate. We're going to make that another debate. I don't mind. Yeah, we yeah, definitely. We're running down to the last two minutes of the show, brothers. Uh, let everyone have, like, have to have an hour, two hour show with you, with you, brothers. Here. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I, I like Brother yeah. Josh, man. Brother Josh, he's very yeah, good. man. Yeah, Brother he's Josh, definitely. Uh, yeah, we need that. We definitely need that. We definitely. Yeah, Brother that. Josh, uh, are you available for another show? Uh, you know, sometime you know in the future. Well, when's the next show? Uh, okay, I'll just set it up and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give it a go, brother, because we got to definitely have a part two, three, four. <laughs> oh, amen, <laughs> amen. Oh, yeah, man, definitely. All right, man. that's good. Praise God. I, you so know, I, I watched a couple of your videos, brother. I watched a couple of videos, and I knew you were going to come with it. I knew you were going to come with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, amen. that's right, man. But we all brothers in Christ, so, so you know. That's, amen, that's amen, right. amen. Most, you know. All right, well, so it's one winding down to one more minute left. Um, Brother Josh, could you let the, the listener audience know where they can find you on YouTube, um, you know, where they can find you, let them know the website? Uh, yes, um, I do um, Bible study every week on Power Talk um, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The name of the Power Talk room is Absolute Bible Truth, and it's in um, the spirituality and religious section. And um, I also on YouTube, Truth Teacher 3010. If you just type that in and um, the title of any video you're looking for, it should be able to find me. All right, Brother Sean, also you can let the uh, people know where they can find you on uh, on the website. Well, you can find me, um, I'm also on Facebook, and you can also find me, uh, you can go to our website, www.youforceaction.com, and on that website you'll see a link to our YouTube page, and you'll be able to watch the videos there. As a matter of fact, we have a whole subject on God the Father and, and talking about Jesus Christ and the role of the Holy Spirit. And you can watch those on there as well. Brother Stanley, real quick, I don't know where they can find you. Oh, man. <laughs> they, can just Facebook. They, can, they can just Facebook me. We, we, I don't have a website yet. 
you know, I'm, I didn't stop my videos yet, but um, yeah. I'm going to be also doing a lot of Bible studies on video. Um, just look at my name on Facebook, Stanley Sylvain, um, S-Y-L-V-A-I-N, and then um, befriend me. And, um, and when I come up with my videos, my Bible study videos, you definitely can share in there and please, and, and we can all learn from one another. Amen? Amen. Uh, to all the callers that uh, I didn't get a chance to, well, I tried to ch chime you guys in, but uh, the next time we have this conversation, hopefully the, the system works a little better. Uh, we definitely appreciate you guys listening to the show, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. All right. God bless you guys. Thank you.